But this is uh, part two of the repair log video for my friend Jerry's uh, Yesu FT7800 dual band FM transceiver. Uh, in part one, we diagnosed the problem uh, for the two meter transmit uh, problem down to this pair of parallel PIN diodes that they're open. Uh, they're in the uh, VHF output filter path leading to the output to the antenna. So in looking to replace these parts, I found that uh, they're obsolete, they're no longer manufactured. So uh, I could get them through you know, some of the surplus uh, suppliers in like Hong Kong and China and Taiwan, etc. And I actually got some quotes ranging from a dollar a piece to over ten dollars a piece. Uh, for those and uh, wasn't real sure I wanted to go order them that way but uh, one of the either one of the viewers uh, of the video or one of the folks in one of the forums where I had posted the video had suggested that the replacement radio or the successor to this radio the Yesu FT7900 has virtually the same uh, circuit design and, uh, and uses a different uh, part number for these two diodes so I took a look at the documentation for the FT7900 and the output amplifier structure is identical at the same schematic and everything and the only thing that's different is the part number used for the for these diodes so since that's a current radio I figured uh, those parts should be available I don't know if Yesu changed the parts because of obsolescence or if they changed the part because they discovered a problem uh, with these particular devices so I figured I'll just replace them with the new parts since everything else in the design is identical, the bias is identical, the filter structure is identical, etc. So I ordered uh, the parts uh, for the 7900 and uh, they are here. So uh, I ordered four of them and for two reasons. One is I wanted to have uh, maybe some pin diodes to do some experiments with later, maybe some videos. But I also figured that um, since these guys are in parallel, I'd want them to be somewhat matched, you know, at least in their DC characteristics. So by having four of them, I can go through and at least measure the forward diode drop of each of those, and then pick the two that more closely match, and those are the ones that I'd put in. So let's go take a, a quick uh, DC measurement of the forward diode drop of each of those, and then we'll pick which two we want to replace uh, or put into the transceiver to fix it. To uh, measure the forward diode drop of these pin diodes, I'm just using the, uh, the Fluke 87 in the diode test mode, and that basically puts a fixed current through the diodes, or reasonably close to a fixed current, and then measures the diode voltage, uh, the voltage across them. So I'm also uh, using a, a nice little pair of uh, tweezers, these are made by Pomona, and I can just you know, put those tweezers across the diodes. I pulled them out of the carrier uh, because the carrier may be conductive. I didn't measure it, but I figured at least that way I'll measure them here on the bench. It's a non-conductive surface. So I'm just going to look at, uh, at each of these. Let's uh, kind of go grab that first one. And that's showing a drop of about uh, 0 0.646, 645. Just leave it for a few minutes just to see how much it changes. 646, 645 or so. So the next one here. Let me uh, do that off camera here. That's also showing 646 dropping to 645. Okay, so those first two look pretty well matched. We look at the next one here. That's 647 dropping to 646. So that one's just slightly higher. And now the last one here, that's uh, 646 running to, down to 645. So those first two, let's drop that 644. Six, okay, so the first two that I tested seem to be the best matched. So those are the first, those are the two that I'll put into the transceiver, and hopefully that will be the, uh, the problem. Removing a two terminal or any surface mount device is always tricky, especially if you want to preserve the integrity of the board. Now I'm kind of lucky enough to have uh, a pair of hot tweezers that uh, I can use here. Now, these are made by Metcal and uh, I should be able to just reach in here and uh, desolder these parts 
pretty easily here. So let's see if we can do this on camera without uh, too much difficulty. So there's one of them. Pull him off. And then we'll go grab the other one here, see if we don't disturb any of the other parts. And just grab the side of him. He should come loose here. And there we go. So that wasn't too bad. So uh, what we'll do is uh, clean up those uh, traces a little bit if we need to, kind of retin those leads, and we'll solder the new parts in place. So the first thing I'll do to uh, try to clean up those pads a little bit is just to take a, a, a Q-tip uh, cleaned up with a little bit of alcohol, or soaked with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. And I've got, I see some, I've got some dried flux under there, just to try to clean that up there a little bit. Get a little more alcohol on here and uh, clean this up a little bit. So I just want to, you know, kind of start off with something pretty clean before we uh, go and mess it up with more flux again. So, so that cleans up pretty well. We should be good to go to try to pre prepare those pads to... Um, clean up some of the other things on the board here. Clean up those pads a little bit and prepare to solder uh, the new parts in place. Everybody's got their own technique uh, that they'll use when uh, soldering down surface mount parts. When I've got parts like this, especially when they're uh, I'm kind of restricted in area, what I like to do is kind of keep one side of the component kind of flat and mostly free of solder. And I'll put a little extra solder on one of the pads, like right here, we'll do that one, and a little fresh solder on that pad as well. So a nice little smaller fresh pad of solder on those. When I bring the part in, I can solder that side and have the part lay reasonably flat and then solder the other side so that the part uh, ultimately winds up uh, pretty flat on the board. So with that side kind of done, uh, we'll apply just a little bit of flux and uh, and then we'll bring the part in or parts in and solder one side of each of those. Okay, let's bring a little bit of flux in here. Uh, let's see if I can do this without uh, making too much of a mess. There we go. So a little bit of flux in there. Sorry about bumping the camera and making it a little jumpy. So now with the flux applied, we can uh, bring the part in and uh, solder one side, get that done. Okay, I'm ready to bring the first uh, pin diode in there to solder in place. Got it uh, in the tweezers here. Cathode was mounted uh, towards my left hand here, so this is the right orientation. And uh, see if I can get the soldering on in here at the right angle and not hit the camera or anything else. So let's see what we can do here. Get this uh, down in there. So I got one side mounted and uh, soldered in there nice and clean. And uh, let's go and do the other one. Okay, here, here comes uh, device number two. Got it all in the tweezers here, ready to go. Again, trying to do this around uh, the camera. A little bit tougher, but let's see what we can do here. Get that soldered down there. And there we go. So there's the second part in there. So now all we need to do is uh, apply a little solder to the near sides of those components and uh, we should be good to go. So again, a little tough to do in front of the camera. It's kind of taking the better angle here. But let's see what we can do. Get the soldering iron in there and lay a little solder in there. There's one. And bump the camera again there. Sorry about that. And get a little solder in there for part number two. There we go. Okay, I'll take a closer look at those under some magnification. But that uh, should do it for replacing those two pin diodes. Okay, with those uh, in there, they look pretty good under magnification. So I'm just going to go in there with a little brush and some uh, isopropyl alcohol to start to clean away some of the residual flux that's left in there. Doing this a little gingerly, uh, a lot of those inductors that are in there are kind of open, you know, just coils of wire, and I don't want to distort, distort them. So I'm just going to try and dilute as much of that flux in there as I can, 
I'll just do this a number of times, you know, uh, cleaning the brush a couple of times to try and get as much of that uh, flux out of there. I don't have any no-clean flux here, so I try to clean off you know, when I do this uh, this kind of a thing. So I'll, I'll clean this up, I'll go in there with a Q-tip and dry it, go in there with a tissue and dry it, clean it again. I'll do this a couple of times to try and get uh, as much of the flux out of there as possible. All right, all cleaned up. Um, I realized that in my cleaning, I had wiped off the anode and cathode markings on the diodes as well. So I just put a little ink mark on the cathode, just in case someone has to get in there in the future, they can see the polarity. So uh, I got the power hooked back up. We're hooked back up into the, uh, the watt meter here, and I've uh, got the rig ready to go. So uh, speaker's hooked up again. And uh, let's go see if we transmit on two meters. So if I take a look and uh, got this thing set up on this two meter channel, and we transmit here, take a look at the power meter. Lo and behold, we're about 45 watts of uh, RF power. So that was the problem, those two PIN diodes. Um, and uh, some of the measurements I made earlier, it looked like uh, the bias was all gonna be right on those. I checked these resistor values uh, to be sure that we're gonna get uh, the right correct amount of current limiting through those diodes and the fact that I'm getting 45 watts out uh, without uh, you know, the power supply set to 12 volts not 13.8 so uh, that's reasonable for this 50 watt rig so it looks like uh, a successful repair and uh, anyway thanks for uh, hanging in for the, the cliffhanger there with part one of the video um, you know, I was hoping that I'd find a problem with you know that I could repair with parts on hand but we had to wait a week to uh, get the parts here so there was part two a uh, nice successful repair uh, thanks for watching and comments are always welcome